I've noticed this really interesting thing that the personal preferences, uh, the temperament of the leader of the transformation impacts, for better or worse, the way this um, journey unfolds. And so I think there's real value in bringing consciousness to your own preferences, to your own style, um, so that you don't act just with your unconscious bias that it's sometimes um, might lead the, the transformation uh, in the wrong direction. And the, the way I started to think about it is in terms of uh, polarities. So the first one that comes to mind is uh, this very important polarity between you know, a preference that some of us have for clarity and standardization, um, and or preference that some of us have for ambiguity and emergence and chaos. And so for instance, my personal preference is, you know, I like to think in systems. And so very early on, I imagine, I like to imagine that, you know, this will be the new way we do things, the new practice, new process. And my tendency would be to maybe too early, too quickly, uh, impose a new way of doing things. Oh, you know, if we shift to self-management, let's do this process in this way. Um, when actually people aren't ready yet, you know, people need more time to explore and experiment. Um, that, you know, for those of you who are familiar with MBTI, might be linked to my, you know, my personal type as a J, and whereas other people are P. And I know of one leader um, of the, the transforming a very large organization, and he is at the other extreme. I mean, he's just incredibly comfortable with emergence and ambiguity and different people going at different speeds and different people trying all sorts of processes. So at the same time in the same organization, the same process is done in 20 different ways. And he's totally comfortable with that. Um, but maybe sometimes too comfortable. Um, I think there's a need in the organization to formalize things that he might not be sensing because his preference is so much on the other extreme. And so my invitation is simply to notice where is my preference? And can, you know, am I able to pick up what the organization needs and go there rather than to impose my preference? So for me, again, this would mean, you know, even if I have this tendency to go like, mm, you know, I'm, I have all these ideas about how this process, new process could look like, is first to pause and say, is this the right moment to start formalizing things? Or might this be too soon? And for this other leader, it might be the opposite. It might be, oh, I'm, I'm so comfortable with things not being clear, but you know, what does the organization actually read, read right now? A second axis is this actions of patience versus impatience. And again, you might have a strong preference. You, know, you might be perpetually impatient. You already want to be where you want to be. We talked about this in a previous video, right? You might, might be about already picturing how this organization looks like you know, once it's it really reinvented itself. Um, and other people might be maybe too patient at times. You know, whatever rhythm is good. Um, and there's a, there's a healthy impatience. And so again, where do you fall in that spectrum? And are you able to sense what the organization needs? A third polarity to explore is a question of do you lead from behind or do you lead from the front? And in an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about the different roles that I see for CEOs in such a transformation. And some of these roles, you know, you're naturally meant to lead from behind, I feel, and others, um, the invitation is very strongly to lead from the front. Um, so there's no value judgment here. Uh, what I'm again inviting you to do is to see, you know, what is your natural tendency? Do you tend to naturally always, you know, lead from the front? There's no judgment there, or do you tend to naturally always lead, you know, from from behind? Um, and are you able to let go of your preference if it's very strong to actually sense what's needed in the moment? Um, and the fourth and last polarity that um, I often think about is, you know, do we do we speak and solve things from the head? Or do we speak and solve things from the heart? 
Uh, and again, you might have preferences. Now, in general, um, our business culture is very much a culture where you know, we tend to come at things way too much from the head. Right? We engage in, for instance, in, in rational discussions and in meetings. And actually, the real topic is at a much deeper level, is that people have frustrations or don't feel recognized. And so we can talk as much as we want from the head. We're not actually addressing the real issue. So for most people, um, here the invitation is to see if they can shift further and at times engage with colleagues and with the whole organization, um, much more from the heart space. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, some people have the opposite preference. Or I've noticed a number of leaders who you know, had this, op this belief that suddenly, you know, the only space they could speak from was this heart space and everything should come from that space. And that in this new, you know, world that, you know, we're talking about numbers and talking about uh, facts and figures and all of this, you know, and, and generally speaking from a headspace was frowned upon. And of course, that's not true. We need all of that. And the question is, again, simply, do we have the flexibility to go there? So there's probably many other polarities that we could think about. And so think about if there's one that, that comes up for you. Um, but my invitation to you is, is very much um, to explore at least along these four axes that I shared with you. Um, you know, where is your personal preference? And does it, you know, can it um, prevent you from doing what the organization needs at a certain moment in time? Perhaps you've noticed there is no paywall, no monthly membership to access this video series. That's because the videos live in the gift economy. This is how it works. I gift everything that goes into making the videos, my time, energy, and insights, and you get to choose what feels right to gift back. Please take a moment to reflect on what would feel good to give in return to help me continue doing this work. Thank you.